employment remains high and in fact fuel the youth led unrest in Maputo in 2010. A good example of the inability of Mozambique to translate opportunities to growth can be found in the Hira the Mozambique Tourist Destination Project with an extraordinary touristic asset. This has also become a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In spite of this potential, the number of flying tourists remain abysmally low at 50,000 annually. Compare this, which is this figure represents 10% for the neighboring Tanzania and 5% for Kenya. The inability to convert these plants into concrete scale has made them to become project catalog. The authors take the reader on an instructive tour of Central Asia, as Central America, Asia, and Middle East, analyzing the various development trajectories with a view to identifying the principles and the practices that might be gleaned from what has worked, and perhaps use this as a building block for Af to construct Africa's unique growth strategy. The African growth model that will be sustainable will also require African leaders who will not only adopt necessary reforms, but push these reforms to a logical conclusion, regardless of pressing political demands. The book is put together by a brilliant African woman of Southern, Diana Gage, CEO of Africa. It is a collection of interviews with and articles by those with clear and demonstrable track record of operations in African business environment. The range from Coca-Cola to artists to multi-choice and also individuals such as Greg Mills, Tony Elumelu, Duncan, Duncan Clark, and a host of others. Like the book of it, progress will require people to think beyond the advantages of keeping things just as they are today and instead of focus on tomorrow's opportunities. I find the concluding part of the book particularly interesting when it states that there will always be a wide gap between those African states which favor the institutional model of growth over that base of enterprise to entrepreneurship. What Hex and Mills are saying is that in the final battle for liberation, the enemies to be tackled at all costs are the apostles of policies of rebellion and preventive politics. The government must allow entrepreneurs to create wealth as their citizens of poverty. I wish to show you the books. First, Africa's Third Liberation. standing to my right, and he is not disowning what I'm saying, but I also have standing to my left, Diana Gaines, whose book is called Business in Africa, but not just Business in Africa, Corporate Insights. The nature and volume of these debates, more often than not, overwhelm African governments and leave them with no more than an imperfect compass that might help them to arrive at a prescribed destination of sustainable growth. In almost all the cases, the outcome rarely justified anxiety, effort, and sincerity of the initiators of the debates. In addition to the nature and volume of the debates, there always seems to be a hidden gap between the environmental context where the conclusions of the debates are to be implemented and the spirit that produced them. One does not require any special knowledge to know that Continental imperative for African government to get committed to ensuring conditions that will necessarily be path to massive creation of jobs. The daily expanding army of unemployed youth that fill African cities paint the picture of a time of that is only waiting to explode. African governments must defuse the bomb. Through the implementation of reform economic policies that will eliminate youth unemployment before it turns to another kind of Arab spring. In addition, improvements in communication are greatly.
Going by the book review that was done excellently, I believe that uh, both authors did catch, in essence, on one part, the fundamental challenges and problems we faced on the continent as a whole, and on the other part, the kind of initiatives that are beginning to evolve in trying to get us out of the situation we find ourselves in on the continent uh, in order to move forward. Um, I believe that um, most of the things that were discussed and the general spirit and atmosphere of the day, again, which is something that is always constant at gatherings like this, is one of a positive can-do spirit. We need to sort ourselves out. We need to sort out issues about leadership, issues about followership, um, trying to see if we are really learning the lessons that are being taught by the experiences that we've all gone through from time to time. So I think from that point of view, it was a very, very good uh, book, book launch and um, I found it quite interesting.